Good morning. Let me uh, check to make sure that our stream is going through like it should be. I'm going to guess that it is. So, good morning. Welcome to your Thursday morning cup of cyber. Man, it's been a long week, right? Um, today, we're going to talk a little bit more about the risk management framework. And we're going to finish up talking about the new step zero. What do they call it? They call it the prepare step, but uh, folks that have been around the old RMF are probably going to call it step zero still because. That's what we call it. You know, there's six steps. Now they've added a new one. There should be seven, but they want to wanted initially call it zero. Uh, now it's just prepare and we've got rid of the numbers. So today's early coffee brought to you by the great state of Montana. Let's get going and start talking about this thing. You know what? We started talking last week about um, the first half of this prepare step where the organization prepares for uh, the RMF. And that's important. That should happen before any system goes through the RMF because there's there's organizational requirements like what are the inherited controls. Um, so in this um, in this half of the, the step, we get the system ready to go through uh, the RMF and the SDLC or the system or software development life cycle. Um, the first thing we want to do, it first task in this step for the system owner is to figure out the mission or business focus that the system or piece of software uh, is going to take on. So what, what does this thing, this application or this system do for um, the business or what does it do for the mission of the organization? And that's going to help us determine how critical this is uh, to the overall organization and that helps us with our priorities. So really we're setting the stage here for determining the, the categorization of the system, determining the importance of the system, determining how much uh, rigor we're going to put into developing the system, right? And, and we do this because there's a, a limited set of resources or finite set of resources we can put in to any system because the organization only has a certain amount of money and resources including people and equipment and stuff. So we have to, to prioritize that, and that's what the, this risk management's all about, that the most critical applications, the most critical systems, the most sensitive information gets the most protection, and then as that goes down, uh, we, we reduce that. So first we have to determine for this system or this application, how does it um, connect to what the organization's mission is, right? Next, we have to look at system stakeholders. Who is going to be impacted by this system throughout its life cycle? So, through throughout when, you, when we from when we start building it all the way to when we de decommission it, who are those people that are going to be impacted? Who's going to use it? Who's going to have to support it? Um, who who just who anyone who's impacted? Who authorizes it? Everybody. We have to get those people down. Uh, we have to list them, and we have to list their relationship to the system. So that we can, you know, consult with them if we need to. Next, we have to define our assets, and remember, assets can be um, both physical and logical. So we can have a physical asset like a server, or we can have a, a logical or a, a software asset. Um, hey, good morning. Um, so you can have a physical or a logical asset that. Um, we have to account for. So software, hardware, all those pieces that support the system. And maybe even, you know, in some cases, uh, the uh, reputation of the organization, right? So what are all the assets that are impacted by the system or will be impacted by the system? So we have to determine all those and get them down uh, in, in our documentation, right? System stakeholders we talked about, asset identification, authorization boundary. Um, where are the edges of the system? So this is important. We're going to determine for this uh, accreditation, for the this look at the system as we're building it out, 
where do we where do we draw the lines? How big is the system? And this is kind of hard to do um, because we don't want to make the system so big that it's going to take forever to get through the the RMF. We don't want to make it so small that we have a whole bunch of different authorizations to do or RMF packages to do. So uh, it's critical to get this right size. Usually, um, you know, they're going to be certain criteria, such as you know, is it is it supporting the same business function? Is it under the same leadership control? Um, so really, the um, the way we look at this is you know important, and obviously each of these these tasks within this step will go into greater depth, right? Each of them deserves its own time. So we'll spend time later. Uh, this is just a higher level overview, right? Man. Uh, determine information types. We, we've also got to determine um, what are the information types that are going to be processed by the system. And this is going to help us with our categorization. Um, the information types are important because uh, determining on the level of protection that you have to apply to these information types is going to determine how much protection we have to um, we have to put on the system, right? Um, so information types are important. We determine, determine them, we get them listed as well. This is not a new task, uh, and most of these are not new tasks. They were actually part of other tasks, right? So this was part of a task in in the old step one. And now it's been determined here. We're going to determine this up front so that we understand these things before we even start building the system. Um, the other thing we do in this step is we look at the information lifecycle. And we have to determine the entire information lifecycle for the information system and what parts of the information lifecycle will be impacted by the system, right? So uh, throughout the information lifecycle stages, how will each of those information stages impact the system and how will the system impact those those stages of the life cycle, right? Um, so we may not have them all within our system. We may only have parts of the information life cycle, right? Maybe we're only processing information. Um, we're not disposing of it or something like that. Uh, we also need to do a system risk assessment. We need, like we did an assessment of the organization. Now we need to look and do those same things for uh, the, the information system or the software. You know, these these things apply to both um, information systems and applications. So let's do uh, this risk assessment and determine what the risk levels are, right? Uh, requirements definition. This is where we determine, you know, what um, privacy requirements and what security requirements are going to be levied against the organization. Um, and we determine which parts of the system, sometimes we have a segmented system, so which parts of the system are actually going to have those controls applied. So if we have, um, for example, a, a control that segments data, we only have PII on part of the, or, or the system, that's the only place we'll need to apply those controls. So we need to go through and, and define uh, these requirements. So normally they're privacy requirements or security control requirements. Um, you know, these are these are early on. We're still developing the system. We're still planning the system, really. We're not even developing yet. So we've got a long ways before we actually start building out the system. So um, we have to get, this is part of the planning. We have to plan. So we have to de define all of our requirements. Um, there we go. Uh, enterprise architecture. How does this fit into the enterprise architecture? Uh, this system? How does it fit into the enterprise architecture? And, um, you know, what parts of the architecture are we going to use? Um, we need to make sure that when we're we're planning to purchase equipment or, or buy a type of uh, uh, software and application, does it fit into our inter inter enterprise architecture? That's both the IT architecture and the security architecture. And again, we'll go through these things uh, in much greater depth uh, when we talk about each of the tasks, right? Um, just trying to keep things organized. Um, and then requirements allocation. Um, this is really that, that earlier step when we determine the requirements. Now we're going to go through and define where they go. Where do those, where are those controls applied? And where are, it really reply, it, it really goes back to, um, you know, where 
is that information kept at? So if the, like we'll use PII, for example. So if PII is kept across your entire system, then we'll have to apply those PII controls across the entire system. But if it's only in a portion of it that's protected by some type of guard, then we'll have to put those, those uh, controls there. So that's when we have to sit back and think about um, how we're going to allocate um, our requirements. You know, where, do, where do those privacy and security controls actually go? Um, and then finally, once we get all of this information together, um, we can register the system. So we'll go to the project management office, or the program management office, or some type of system like the, the government, some parts of the government that use um, governance and risk management systems like uh, something like EMAS. You'll go in there and you'll set your system up. You'll register your system. And, and a lot of times then that will do things like validate that there's not another system that does the same thing. Uh, maybe assign you resources like a project manager or something like that. Um, maybe give you your your, your uh, system registration numbers, that kind of thing. But it's really important. This used to be step one point, or excuse me, a, a task in step one, a uh, task one three. But now it's done earlier. We get the system registered up front. That way, if the something like the project management office looks at it and says, no, we, we already have a system you didn't know about that does that, we can stop right now and go talk to them and see, will that system help us? So um, I guess the change for today, for, for what we're talking about, if you watched uh, Cyber Preview, today we were supposed to be talking about step one. Uh, we're a little bit off because we didn't finish step zero last week because there's just so many tasks in it. Um, and again, these tasks are, are not necessarily new. Um, they're pulled out of, of tasks we used to have, right? Um, they were implied tasks within other tasks. You know, we, in, in the earlier RMF, there were, there were things that were just kind of implied and they pulled these out now, created their own tasks um, so that we make sure that they get done. Um, so that runs us through it. I, I definitely want to keep these session short because I know you guys got a lot of stuff going on out there. Um, I do like that you guys join. Um, you know, hit me up, hit some comments. Uh, you know, love to hear what you've got to say about the RMF. Um, you know, these cups of cyber, we're, we're doing different topics every day, depending on what you want to you want to talk about. You know, join us in the morning. I know some places really early, uh, so I do appreciate it. Join uh, join us with your cup of coffee, tea, water, whatever your beverage of choice is. As always, we'd appreciate if you like and subscribe, hit the bell to be notified when these things are going on. Um, yeah, just glad you can join us. I'm glad you're watching. If you're watching this later, um, join the cyber world. We need help uh, securing systems. So uh, really look forward to talking with you more. So make sure to comment, like, and subscribe, and we will talk to you tomorrow morning.